Let's shift our focus now to Tesla and the EV space. Joining me right now, Steve Wesley, founder, managing partner, the Wesley Group. Steve Wesley, I'm so glad you're here with us. I want to talk all about all the EVs that we're watching so closely. Of course, you're a former board member of Tesla. And once again, we saw Tesla cutting prices. I mean, I've heard Elon Musk say they can uh, cut when they need to, but it seems that they're cutting periodically. What do you think is behind that, and where does it fit into the EV space? Well, you bet. This is extraordinary news. Tesla has just done their sixth price uh, decrease of the year. They're triggering a global price war. And why not? They're uniquely positioned to win the price war because they've got 13% net margins versus Toyota at 7, Ford at 2. No one else can keep up. They're doing a global land grab because they can. And I think what's interesting for investors is this is just terrible news for Toyota, GM, Ford, and the others, but it's great news for consumers. EV costs are coming down a lot, and they're soon, probably by late next year, 2025, going to cost less than gas cars. The whole world is going electric. Right, understood. In the meantime, you know, I was reading in Barron's over the weekend and they were talking about the competition in the space and actually noting that BYD has been taking market share and actually at 37 to the tune of about 37 percent, four times Tesla, leaving competitors like Lee Auto, Xpeng, and Neo in the dust. Um, where do we stand? Are we worried about the competitive space for Tesla? Because everybody always says what a leader Tesla is. Look. The whole world's going electric. Tesla's the king of the hill. They just delivered 466,000 cars in Q2, $25 billion uh, on track to do 2 million cars uh, this year, $100 billion in revenue. The Model Y is the best selling car in the world, and they're about to launch the Cybertruck. So th this is good news for them. But if you look at the big picture, Tesla, 21% of global EV auto share, BYD at 16.7%. But rounding out the top five, two other Chinese companies, <clears throat> GAC at 6%, Volkswagen at 4.7%, <clears throat> and SAC, SAIC. So three of the top five selling EV brands globally are Chinese. There's a changing of the guard here. Yeah, yeah. Take some water. Um, you know, there's so much going on. We had a great conversation with the chief financial officer of, of General Motors today. They're doing their push in EVs. There's concern about a strike by the UAW. They talked about how much inventory that they have to keep on hand in case of a strike. Where does that fit in for the Tesla picture? Could it could, you know, one man's problem be another man's, you know, win here? What where does that fit in here? And does Tesla have enough inventory. Well, I think Tesla will have inventory. Look, they've got five plants at full production now. They've just broke ground on another plant in Monterey, Mexico. More coming. I, I think the big question when you step back and you look at BYD and say, wow, 352,000 cars they sold in Q2 to Tesla's 466, they're getting pretty close. But BYD is growing faster at 95% year over year. So keep an eye on the Chinese. The big question, if you step back and look at this, is Will Americans and Europeans buy Chinese brands uh, in, in general, but especially with IoT devices in every car? I think a lot of people are not going to feel comfortable with that. And the other big question is, is Tesla's lead in software that drops 99% profit margins to the bottom line going to outweigh China's big advantage in low-cost batteries? Those are the big questions. We'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, understood. At this point, I mean, what are some of the things that, I mean, when we think about Tesla, we think about AI, we think about batteries. When people, I mean, obviously the cyber truck's coming, and I do want to talk about that. But what is Tesla, even um, software services? When you think about Tesla, um, you know, what do you think is going to drive Tesla to the next, you know, higher price point for shareholders because there's a lot of folks that are out there that think it's worth less than $100, and then you have those who are very positive on Tesla. Where do you think it's headed and why? Look, I think it's going to go up, and what people need to understand is Tesla has four core advantages. One, they were one of the first to take battery production in-house. They have lower cost batteries than virtually anybody but the Chinese. Second, they've got an advantage, what's called over-the-air software. That gives them a big advantage. Third, 
they took their dealerships in-house. That gives them a big advantage over others years ago. And fourth, they've been a leader in the robotization of manufacturing. They will manufacture cars in a fraction of the time. They've got large stamping machines. They just have fewer parts in their vehicles. But if you step back a little bit and look to the not too different future, distant future, Tesla's got this other huge advantage no one's talking about yet, but they will be soon. Tesla deployed 3.7 gigawatts of energy storage in Q2. That's enough to power all the homes in Chicago and Los Angeles. Their mega pack batteries combined with their Autobito software that enables them to provide turnkey solutions. In a nutshell, Tesla is quietly becoming a global utility. Now, Q2 energy revenues were only, I say only lightly, 1.5 billion, 6% of total revenue, but they're growing 222% a year. If they can keep up and expand their energy business for another year or two like this, their energy division may be their secret weapon. Oh, okay. Steve Wesley, thank you for that, of the Wesley Group. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Great you to see Thanks you. Love having you on the show always.